So I get a big client and they say, hey, we have this legacy rooftop commercial solar system. I'm getting closer to about 10 years old. And I say, okay, well, what do you want to do with the panels? And, you know, they discreetly said, we'll get rid of them however you think. And they gave me a budget. They said, you know, here's 10 grand and, and make them go away. And I said, well, hold on, you know, we really didn't get into this business to make them go away. I pitched the idea, it's like, hey, use solar panels. Are they viable here? Man, I mean, there was so much attention, Nico, that I came back to the client and I said, hey, here's your $10,000, here's an additional $10,000 because we found a buyer in Latin America. The client says, wow, here's nine more sites. And just like that, we're off to the races. Hey, welcome to another Tactical Tuesday, practical guidance into the career and business opportunities in the clean energy transition. Today, we're going to talk about second life of equipment. When I got into the solar industry in 2006, we were talking about what to do with B-sides and blims and when these products eventually got to the end of their 15, 20, 25 year warranty and useful life. But it turns out you can actually repower most of these old systems with new equipment because of the rate of acceleration and improvement of our technological age. And it makes the system more beneficial. Question remains, what happens to the equipment that comes off of these legacy systems? That's exactly the question that I took to my friend Cesar Barbosa, the CEO, co-founder of New Life Power Systems. He has dedicated his entire career to operations and maintenance and repurposing the equipment that comes off of these old systems. He's got some very interesting answers, and I hope you will stick around because you are going to love this episode of Suncast. Today, I'm here in beautiful Dana Point with my friend Cesar Barbosa of New Life Power Systems. Today, we are going to dig into second life, the Wild West of what happens when solar panels reach the end of their financed life, not their useful life. Cesar, you have been in the solar industry for a decade or so now, or maybe a little more. Your first business was operations and maintenance. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Right, right here in Southern California. How did you get the idea to start a business in O&M in, in California Solar? Yeah. So 15 years now in the solar industry, and it sounds kind of crazy to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but going into 15 years. So started installing it, literally throwing panels on the back of my back and, and installing them. Yep. Uh, naturally, you get into service and repair. Yep. Um, and then uh, something interesting happened uh, with the second phase of, of our business now, which is our focus, which is decommissioning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it was an organic kind of flow from yep. O&M to where we are today. Gotcha. So you were installing, you saw the opportunity that there were a bunch of homeowners and businesses that didn't have proper operations and maintenance technicians servicing those systems. And it turns out, you ended up getting clients that are rather large, well-known, established brands in the industry. And you get a phone call one day. Tell me about that phone call. <laughs> okay. Changed your life, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> so a lot of folks ask me how I got into PV end of life and decommissioning um, and, and what made me think of it. I, I didn't think of it. It was actually, it was, it was thrown on me. Yeah. So I get a big client and they say, hey, we have this uh, legacy uh, rooftop commercial solar system. System's about 10, uh, get, getting close to about 10 years old. The PPA, it's leased. As you know, we were selling PPA back then, 10-year yeah. terms. Um, and I say, okay, well, what do you want to do with the panels? And, you know, they discreetly said, we'll get rid of them however you think. Uh, and they gave me a budget. They said, you know, here's 10 grand and, and make them go away. And I said, well, hold on. You know, we really didn't get into this business to make them go, go away. away. Um, so uh, let me see what else we can think of. That year happened to have been the first year that SPI was in Mexico City. Okay. So I fly, I fly out 2016. there. 2016. Yeah. Yep. And so I pitched the idea. Exactly right. I pitched the idea. It's like, hey, use solar panels. Are they viable here? Man, I mean, there was so much attention, Nico, that I came back to the client and I said, hey, here's your... $10,000. Here's an additional $10,000 because we found a buyer in Latin America. Right. The client says, wow, here's nine more sites. And just like that, we're off to the races. Yeah. So we all know like, you know, guys like John Kimball and Sun Electronics have had a business for three decades selling B-sides and blims, right? The modules that come off the factory line that aren't quite great. And PV Exchange and others, frankly, failed too early soon into a market 2016, 17, 18, trying to create a second life exchange or marketplace for folks that are pulling modules off. And unfortunately, in the interim where those companies failed and or had been focused on, you know, B-sides, blims, just excess modules, there is this reality that repowering a system gives more economic yield to the asset owner, but you have modules that are perhaps, you know, 
BP-190s, to name one that I know is not a part of the case mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, first solar modules that are getting pulled off of these assets. And frankly, to incriminate some folks that are owners, are saying, you know what? Put them in a landfill. It's probably cheaper. Recycling's not here yet. We didn't have the, you know, half a dozen companies that are ex existing right now that are, uh, you know, doing an earnest job in trying to recycle these modules. You go down to Mexico and you find an open market for folks that say, hey, these modules are warranted for 25 years and they've got 15 years of good life left. What's the margin opportunity for you as a business? You've got a profitable business here in O&M in, o in the United States. Why stand up an operation in Latin America selling used equipment? Look, I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Mm. Uh, my family is from Mexico. Uh, my parents are now there living there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to see an opportunity to... Uh, use an industry that's been so so done so well for me and my family and to find a unique way to give back, whether that's through a, a use component. Um, listen, you go to a farmer and you say, hey, here's a 200 watt panel right. for, you know, nickels on, on, on the dime of what otherwise right. they bought something new. They're going to take it with both arms. Oh, this is amazing. So you're taking something from, let's say it's a it's a commercial rooftop system with 500 modules, a thousand modules, and you're bringing them down and pairing them with, say, a water pumping system you effectively take something that is bought at wholesale and sell it at retail, repackage into a new product. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, uh, mud and brick uh, mortar homes, uh, uh, watering well systems. Uh, there's a lot of ag out there. Uh, it, it's not the same kind of AJ regulations that we have right. here stateside. So there's so many ample uh, uses for use. Amazing. Did you stand up an entire business that's now doing retail sales mm -hmm. into communities in Mexico? You know, so so we actually, re a couple of years ago, my wife and I, we sold everything here and we relocated to Mexico because that was the dream. That was the idea. And and you had to stand there in order to receive it because we were, we were moving thousands and thousands a, a month of solar panels. And uh, I gave my wife a promise. I said, hey, let's give this a try. If in six months it's not for you, we'll, yeah. we'll go somewhere else. We lasted three. Well, you take for granted what it's like to live uh, in, oh, in the beautiful United States of America. Yeah. So home is here, uh, but we're, we're working with partners in, in other countries. Yeah, fantastic. Is this endemic in our industry that we're going to see this over and over? It seems like something that is not a one-off situation. Yeah. In terms of, of used solar panels, you got several options, okay? So so we can, you know, the better use is to repurpose them, yeah. okay? Let them continue to yeah. yield power. Reuse. <laughs> Reuse. It's the typical R's, right? Yeah. The second one is to is to uh, basic, what well, we call that repurpose, right? Yeah. So, so you do it. The other one is refurbish. Sometimes it's just a lead that needs to be replaced. Maybe it's just, um, you know, the, the back junction box needs a little bit of service. Uh, you can do something with these modules. And then the last case is to recycle the solar panel. And obviously we want to do that responsibly through the accredited facilities. I know that SIA has been doing a lot of work helping to support lifting that industry out of, uh, you know, the, the the economic uncertainty that really surrounded well, all recycling, frankly, right? We think that recycling in our homes is being done right, but really we're sending it into into the the landfills. How is the solar module industry maturing along that? How is it any different? No, we're making uh, great strides. Uh, we're part of uh, the CALSA and the CIA recycling committees. Uh, we're pushing to push uh, legislation and, and, and regulations here in California. There's other states that are a little ahead of us, uh, ironically. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of uh, incentive and a lot of good folks that are part of this uh, initiative. How do we foster a better community of companies like New Life that can help the mega corporations like Safeway, I know Safeway right now is in a repowering campaign, right? Mm -hmm. How do we help them know what to do with these modules so that we can avoid the disaster of sending them to the landfill? Yeah, yeah, good point. Look, uh, the initial step is uh, to review and do a, do a proper due diligence of the system. Not every module is is uh, uh, fit for a reuse. You mentioned, you know, some some of the BPs, the smaller wattage yeah. modules. I mean, we don't want to take our trash per se and, and and give it to some other country right? right so so every site needs to be looked at uh differently and we can do that fairly quickly yeah. right so i would say you know hire a professional somebody that knows this industry that has that whole turnkey ability to take it from a rooftop and, and yeah. all the way to the 10 use wherever it's going um, and get a quick response get some budgetary pricing and then they're going to have to make the ultimate decision of what's what makes sense for them could you Unpack that term of repowering and what does it mean for the average installer? How can folks really not only understand the term, but understand 
where it fits within the life cycle of a project, what the options are, and how other installers, maybe in other countries, could get on the bandwagon of repowering. Yeah, absolutely. So I think everybody knows that we're having a big uh, issue with the inverter manufacturers, legacy inverter manufacturers. Right? Yeah. When when folks think about repower, the I think the first thought that comes into their head is, I got this old central inverter that it's not operating, I'm not getting good service, what can I do to, to, to repair it or, or, or somehow re-engineer it? Okay, that's, that, there's plenty of folks and there's different options that we can do with that. In terms of the actual system itself, repowering can mean removing the solar panels, leaving the racking system. It can mean removing the racking system and, 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 and bringing in a new solar panel. It means trying to take advantage of the infrastructure as much as, much as possible yeah. and, and just integrating some uh, a newer component, but still keeping the same the same interconnection agreement, still keeping a lot of the existing infrastructure, and every every job that you can get creative to try to save money, and then and then do do responsible with the components that were otherwise having to recycle. There's no secret. Central inverters is is uh, is an inverter that is no longer really being uh, reused, at least not in the CNI commercial and industrial. Uh, perhaps more in the utility, sure. But even some systems, I've seen systems that are somewhere in the five to ten megawatts that are implementing string inverters. I would say that nine out of the ten systems systems that we've looked at for repowering, we are taking out the central inverter and bringing in a, a string inverter, whether that's through an optimizer or, or some kind of a, uh, you know, rapid shutdown integration. Uh, we're definitely leaning more towards string inverter for repowering. Yeah. And do you see software upgrades? And again, I'll, I'll mention AI because everyone loves to try to contemplate how is machine learning and AI helping us. Um, you've got companies like Raptor Maps with digital twins. Like how is that landscape evolving for software uh, and repowering? Yeah, when, when I hear that, Nico, I, I go to monitoring, right? Okay. And so maybe the, the first initial questions we ask is how is your monitoring operating? Uh, do, you, do, do you see anything? What do you not see? And then we'd implement, you know, basic monitoring systems. Um, sometimes they're non-existent and we have the opportunity to go out and see, yeah. see what's out there. Uh, sometimes they already have something and it's just a matter of upgrading some of their, some of their data components, data acquisition components. Yeah. And if they want to reach out to you directly, how could they do that? Say yeah, I'm on LinkedIn pretty actively, Nico, like yourself. Send me a direct message. I'm pretty good at getting back to you. And um, I'm, I'm happy to schedule a free 30-minute intro call to, to just brainstorm and see if we're the right fit and can provide some value. Cesar Barbosa, CEO and founder of New Life Power Systems, giving second life to the California and beyond commercial industrial solar panels and equipment. Repowering is a real opportunity. If you're in the commercial industrial space, if you're in the United States in particular, the systems are beginning to age. In, in Germany and Spain and many parts of Europe, repowering ha over the last decade has been the second life for the industry itself. Believe me, this is coming. It's going to become a bigger and bigger topic. I'm glad that we got a chance to talk with Cesar today, who I believe is one of the pioneers in the U U.S. in the CNI space specifically. You'll hear a lot of folks talking about the utility scale repowering market and not a lot of folks doing what Cesar has been doing for the last six plus years in the repowering and the repurposing of the CNI space. More to come. Keep watching this, man. What do you think? Are we in an era where we need a whole new industry that just repurposes all of the equipment that's coming off of these solar arrays? Where should they go? And more importantly, do they keep their warranty? Is it fair and equitable to take these this equipment and push it into developing nations? Cesar and I, for one, believe that it is. How can we develop a market around it? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. and. If you are looking at how to build a business like this and you'd like to get Cesar or my opinion on it, please leave us a comment below. Reach out directly in LinkedIn. Shoot me an email, nico at mysuncast.com. I'd love to help you. Love to coach you through the process. I'm sure Cesar would be happy to chat with you as well. Remember, you are what you listen to. Thanks again for tuning in and showing up. It's half the battle.